I did it again. Welcome to the dumbest channel in all of YouTube. Uh, dumbest human in all of YouTube, maybe. Uh, let me explain how I'm choosing these crazy products that I'm getting in. I have a short list of products that, I, that I'm looking for, that I'm interested in, things that I want to try out, things that I want to share with you guys. And uh, you know, on this list is like the Sony uh, IEM Z1R, the uh, Focal Utopia, the Focal Stelia, the uh, Tia Forte Noir. I'm really looking for a pair of Forte Noirs uh, because uh, I'm really interested in those. I have the Forte. I want to hear what the Forte Noirs sound like, and I'm not going to get them unless I buy them. I'm not going to be able to audition them unless somebody wants to send me a pair, which would be great, but, you know, there's not like a long list with 50 viewers. <laughs> All 50 of you there's not there's there's not like a, a long line of people lining up to give me gear and then the other one that I'm that just got added to this list is the unique melody mest uh, a lot of people are asking about that one I'm curious about that one I would like to hear it and then there are hardware uh, selections that I'm looking for things that I want to I want to integrate into my system uh, there's a, uh, a chord M scaler I'm very interested to hear what that does to sound uh, I'm hearing great things. I want to hear it for myself. So I'm very curious. I'm trying to find a deal on one of those. If one of those pops up, it's coming in. Um, there's the Macintosh MP1100. That's a phono pre that's dedicated. That's very much like the C2600, but it's just for phonographs. Uh, very interested in that product. If I can find one and get a deal on it. Uh, I've found them, but they're way out of my price range at the moment. Um, and I'm not exactly monetizing anything on YouTube. These commercials, you know, there's there's nothing coming into the coffers off of off of this. This is all just for fun and for you guys right now. Um, but it's a passion project, so I don't care. And then there are new products that I'm interested in, like everybody else, and you know, the Odin certainly qualify in that category. So that's sort of like the range of what I'm looking for and what I'm trying to audition as we go along. And uh, this product was something that I wanted to try since the, I listened to the Odins, which I'm, I'm listening to the Odins more than anything else right now. I spent uh, half a day with the ZMF Verites just going through tracks and listening to those. And Zach contacted me after I published that video. I guess he was one of the 50 that watched. <laughs> And um, he's gonna send me a uh, uh, he's gonna send me the new ear pads, uh, two new sets of ear pads, which I had ordered, but they didn't put them in the package, whatever. But he's he said he's gonna get those out to me, which is great, uh, and I appreciate it. And I'm even honored that he you know <laughs> watched my goofy video. Um, so let's get right to today's episode of what's in the box. <laughs> what's in the box? What's in the box? This is really fun, and this was one of these items, like I said, that was on my short list, and I wanted to audition for quite a while. And uh, it's nothing I've really talked about much on this channel, so that's kind of what makes it fun. I'm gonna put this knife down so I don't, we don't need to see bleeding. So we've got some packing material. I should specify, this is not a brand new item. I'm just saying that right up front. Okay, so I've got a bubble wrap. And I've got a case, which just fell on the floor. <laughs> no idea what these sound like. And I'll explain why these were on my short list in a bit. Ready? <laughs> this is the Shure KSE 1500. So why the 1500? Um, electrostats interest me. And one of, those one of the items that are on, that's on my short list is uh, Stax headphones. I'm very interested in getting into electrostats at some point. But in-ears are very interesting. I mean, this is a pure electrostatic. And I asked on, on HeadFi when I was looking into this uh, and considering this pair, um, I, I went into the to the KSE 1500 forum and asked if, are the KSE 1500 still relevant in today's world of all of these hybrids and uh, different designs and shoving 18 you know, armatures into a single headphone and an electrostat and whatever else they're throwing in there. Like the Odins, they have electrostats. And, and what the response I got was that, well, they're not pure electrostats. So you can't call them electrostats. So that got me wondering and starting to search for, for this product, which is pure electrostat. Oh, let's see, let's see what happens. Very nice. When you see a cloth in a cellophane wrapper, you know you're in for good, for good business. 
and ready for the reveal. I'm hoping it's here. <laughs> you know my reveals have not been all that spectacular, so let's let's try and get it right on the first try, shall we? Um, and ready, and there they are. There they are. And they look pretty good. And they look pretty good. And this even has... Look, the, uh, the the plastic tab is still on these. These are barely used. Well, that's kind of impressive. So this would be the Energizer and the DAC. And there you go, there's the cable. Now, sure, the port is usually much smaller than most other headphones. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure whatever yeah I know um, if the if I'm gonna have an ear tip that will fit this but I think I have some final ease that kind of go down that small um, let's dig deeper <laughs> okay let's not dig deeper this one like the other one has a drawer and here we go okay so there's a charger the fancy sure case an unopened leather very nice what's in here oh he gave me a second I got a second pair how interesting there's two see I got two two full pair of headphones that's a pretty good deal that made this deal get a whole bunch better Quarter, three quarter. Here, here's a USB. Some bands to hold everything together. A couple little jumpers. Here's a lightning. Got some tips. This is a lot like a pro audio setup. If you've ever worked with pro audio microphones and uh, connectors to uh, mixers, they use this type of connector. Very cool. Very high-end stuff. Very nice. I mean, I've used Shure mics forever. I've used the SM57 on almost everything I've ever recorded at some point or another. Um, they make some fantastic studio microphones. They've always had kind of average consumer-grade headphones, and I've owned some of those over the years, um, particularly like long ago, like before headphones were a thing. And when this first came out, about five years ago, and that's part of why I was on HeadFi asking around, like, is a five-year-old electrostat still relevant in today's market? I mean, that's a valid question. But at the time, this thing was $3,000, and it's still $3,000 brand new. Um, obviously, I can't buy afford the $3,000 brand new right now <laughs> because... You know, Odin's and Verite's, uh, which were bought at retail at full price. Back five years ago, $3,000, I mean, that was, uh, I think the LCD3 was the headphone of the day, and uh, that was 2000 Everyone, oh my God, a $2,000 headphone. And there were still stacks, stacks were still high, but um, these were considered so far out of reach, and now... $3,000 for, a, for a, a, a headphone is kind of like, okay, that's top of the line. You know, that's an average top of the line pair. When you've got the Odin's at 32, 3,300, you've got the uh, um, Forte's at 3,500, the Forte Noirs are at 38, 3,900. Up at the highest end, you've got the King Arthur from Effect Audio. That's a that's at seven or $8,000, I think. So, you know, suddenly three thousand dollars doesn't look like that much, although it's still it's still a ton to me. So let's start with trying to turn it on, and I think this would be the logical place I would do that. But it may be out of power. Oh no! Hold, please. Oh, electrostatic amplifier. Look at that. I mean, it's gonna do a little bit of that Hertz thing. But it's got 82% power. Now, if I can get a pair of tips on this, I think we're heading into a sound check. What do you think? Go. I'm going to sound check it with the KM. I got a PM. Somebody PM me after watching my video and my tragedy with the KM and the back on this thing. You remember the back came off? The adhesive strip gave way when I dropped it. Let me just say this on camera. When I dropped it on the floor. This stuff. 
this is double stick. It's a little wheel of little eighth inch double stick, which I cut in half with a pair of scissors and then put them around the edge of the uh, can back with the top off and then I just pressed it in and it got really, uh, it, it stuck. This won't come off anymore. I used to push here and it would pop the whole top off. Now it's all stuck again. And now I've got fingerprints on. By the way, I'm gonna show you a really quick trick for getting rid of fingerprints on anything. And I have no ties to this company at all. This is just a product that I use that I absolutely love. Mr. Smitty's Glass Wax. Give it a little shake. Put a couple of drops down. And rub it in. This is a waxy substance. It feels like wax going on. Take a microfiber cloth and lightly rub it off. And what you're left with is a brand new surface. No fingerprints, perfectly clean. I use this stuff on eyeglasses. I use this stuff on sunglasses. I use it on my uh, phones, my iPad. It will take fingerprints out of anything. See all these fingerprints? Watch this. Just one drop. Rub it around. Work it in. It attaches to the oil and the grease, and then you just wipe it away. And look, it's absolutely like brand new. So who says I'm not educational? Okay, we're locked up and loaded. Let's play something. Okay, my first thought is, they're not very loud. Uh, my second note is that the bass doesn't come in until you get the volume up. They're very, very clean. Alright. This is... This is a really cool pair of earphones. I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a very good journey. This is amazing. This is, this is, this has got the clarity of the Odin. It doesn't quite have the bass drive of the Odin off the bat. And this is just, you know, again, first 10 seconds in my ears. It doesn't have quite the bass impact of the Odin, but it's full range. Um, I'm definitely getting full range. Uh, I'm getting a good sense of sound stage off the bat, uh, very wide, um, and, uh, and tons of detail. You know, I described on the Odin, it was like walking into the showroom and like all the shit's turned on on the TVs and it's all like super hyper contra contrasty and you know, like everything just pops off the screen. This pops without being overdriven. Uh, doesn't feel like it's trying that hard. It's just kind of flowing the music out at you with insane detail. But I can tell you that my initial impression is this is a good face to see when you start playing something through a headphone. Even the Forte, which is kind of known for circumnavigating your head, you know, kind of giving you that whole around thing, doesn't hold it. This, you're dead in the middle of whatever's going on. Um, this is immersive. This is completely immersive. That's the, that's the, if I'm, if you're going to take a word away from this and I'll put it at the bottom, immersive. So I'm going to jump over real quick to the uh, SP-1000. I, I really like the smoothness of, of the N8 so far. I don't like the interface, but the sound out of the N8 is really good. Um, I still think the SP-1000 is probably a little more refined and a little more detailed, but very sharp. They're very clear. Oh yeah. This is a winner. Okay. Let me tell you what I love about Dream in Blue. Dream in Blue has uh, crazy instrumentation, and there's instruments just flying all around your head, and, and you know, little percussion hits and triangles and, and little things. And, and 
through this shore, they're all over the place and they're precise. They're in, in it for coming from a pinpoint in space. So the imaging is precise. Soundstage sounds pretty wide, but I really have to listen, listen to some tracks that are a little more geared towards that spaciousness. Um, the detail is great. They're not overly bright uh, in the sense that the Odin, when I put them in, it was like uh, everything was hyper contrasty. This is extremely sharp, but it doesn't, I don't feel like it crosses that line. I feel like it, it walks up right to the edge of being harsh, but doesn't quite step over unless you get into a super high volume. Um, you have to get the volume up on these to get the bass to start reacting. If you keep the volume low, it's got sort of a loudness, like it almost needs a loudness switch on it, like your old uh, Sony Walkman. Remember Sony Walkmans? Remember with the bass? It's got the mega bass button. You can put the mega bass on when you're listening to it quiet and it would, it would goose. It kind of needs that. So I'm assuming there's probably some EQ settings and stuff in here that you can activate when you're listening at quieter levels that will sort of amp that bass up a little bit. Let me get a little bit of a nectar. The downside is, of course, now you've got, um, you really are married into sort of doing this, you know, of some, something like this. You know, you're gonna have to carry around this because this is the Energizer. And without the without the energizer, the headphones no worky. But you are getting electrostats, pure electrostats, um, in this tiny little in here, and they're comfortable. They're very comfortable. Uh, I feel like I could listen to these all day. Um, they're nice, tiny, cushy earpieces. I, I love the foam ones. Sure, the sure foam inserts work really well at isolation, and they're very comfortable. They're all day comfort. So um, I think I can listen to this, whereas the Odin is, you know, they kind of great on my ear. Like I said, I'm still listening to the Odin more than anything else. I think that I'm going to be listening to these a little bit because I, I'm really impressed with these out of the box. Um, they're not new. There's nothing to really break in on electrostat so i don't think that that's an issue this blew just blew me away out of the box um i'm going to be doing a little bit more auditioning with these and i can't say this is a reference pair because it, it is an electrostat and it's sort of like in it playing in a different pool almost but it has me interested in the stacks now and, and i do think that stacks are on the horizon at some point in my in my desktop situation for a five-year-old headphone Five years ago, this thing probably blew everybody out of the water. It's still very, very impressive to me. Uh, this sounds great. This sounds really great. Uh, so I'm going to be playing with these. Uh, and I don't know that... I think the Odin is about the only thing I would compare them to off the top of my head because it's got the clarity of the Odin without the harshness of the Odin. Uh, the, the Odin, I've had to sort of play with sources... Still, I still really am liking the Odins a lot, and I'm, I'm not gonna to diss on Empire Ears, you know, uh, top of the line IEM, and and the N8 has been a good pairing for it, um, certainly more so than the SP1000, um, which, by the way, the Shure pairs up with just fine. And I'll probably be back later in the week with a with a wrap up sort of of where I'm at with these headphones right now and and what I think of them, and and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a hint i'm probably gonna have to sell a couple of them because i can't keep all these uh, in-house um so thanks again uh i'll have more zmf impressions because i'm getting new ear pads coming in and i think they're going to change the sound of them even more and i'll be able to play with them i'm looking for a little more fun tuning um and these i'm certainly going to try some different ear phone ear tips with um but they don't take the standard tips like the Fortes and the Odins. They require a smaller tip, so I'm going to have to kind of dig through my inventory, my old inventory, old, old inventory, and see if there's anything in there I can use. I do have other IEMs I'm interested in. I've just got, I've got a pile of IEMs on my desk right now, and I don't know what to do with them all. Uh, I'm going to have to make some cuts uh, from, the, from the class. So in the past month, I've been in some, into some pretty high-end shit, <laughs> in my desk this is this is 12 grand <laughs> God, this is like 12,000 this is 12,000 dollars I've got 12,000 dollars in my hand right here I mean this is crazy uh, I never thought of trying this and you know this YouTube thing is just sort of brought out some, some pretty dark I can be to some dark places there's not a whole lot to complain about in this hand right here we're in a crazy good place right now. 
Um, and again, these in, it's the in-ears, the in-ears, the in-ears, the in-ears. And as I, I, I'm appreciative of the ZMS and the Verites, and when I get the new ear pads, I'll keep going on those. But, but damn, damn, we're gonna be going out sure style for a while. Like I got it. This is, this is crazy good stuff. I've heard people rave about these, but uh, you know, you you don't know until you try. Um, and the price was right, so. I think you just gotta go sometimes. You just gotta try these things. I don't know what we're gonna wind up doing, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm gonna bring you all along on this journey. Initial impression on the Shures. These are dynamite, dynamite sounding headphones out of the box. And I may find some flaws with them and find some things that I don't like about them, but the initial, there's a wow factor to these that is undeniable. You guys have made me the uh, fastest growing audiophile channel in all of YouTube because I have nobody watching. So any, anytime I get like three new subscribers, it's like, you've got a 10% increase. Wow. <laughs> so, but continue liking and subscribing. I gotta ask you to do that because uh, if I can ever get to monetization, maybe I can pay for more of this stuff down the road. Uh, but we're a ways off from that. But I do appreciate you guys just coming in and hanging out with me late at night here from the home office, which was originally gonna be the garage, which is director's garage, but it never made it to the garage. It's more like director's den. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. I hope you're I hope you got as much out of this, or at least a little bit as much as I got out of it, because I, I had a ball with these. These are insane. We're going to be playing these all night. Holy goodness, this is a good, this is a good trip. I'm going to catch you guys later. That was, this was my surprise for the week. Remember I said I had a surprise. This is at the KFC 1500. We'll see what I come up with next. Next.